Get the hell out of your way. <laughs> and I said, look, try guy here, he knows. I mean, nowadays, dude, you can get on tonight. Go just look up loops online. Mm -hmm. Drum loops, guitar loops, whatever. There'll be passages of music, two bars long, four bars long, mm -hmm. whatever. And it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you, too, because it's going to be a monotonous thing. So keep even getting bored. Just like, think of, think of how many, just like boys around here, we, we probably, we'll be stacking about five things over those. The boys around here, we have the verses, and the verse kind of has two moves to it. We have a chorus, that's three. And then we have the, ooh, that's right, and then we have the red, red, red. So we have about five or six things on there. How many, is, how many, how many rooms are there in this? Oh, here you come, here you come. that never change. Yeah, but she wrote that song, the amount of bands that she couldn't play, she couldn't do shit and everything, and she couldn't, so she just went on all she could do. Was just... You know, so... Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you know... I mean, look, you want to do this, you want to do this, this is great. I mean, look, this isn't like, this isn't like sex. Like, oh my God, I really, really want to do some sex. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole other element that you can't control with that. There's a whole other thing that has to get going. <laughs> that has to take place. Very complicated or not, depending. But you know what I mean? Sex is hard. Writing a song, I'm pulling out a cordon blue land, man. People are making millions of dollars running taco trucks, selling little freaking cookies and little paper things. Millions of dollars all day long. I'm not saying you should, and I'm not saying you should do it because it's for money or anything. I'm saying, look, look, once again, if you're gonna cook, why in the hell wouldn't you master cook? You want the hell you eat? That's like making clothes you'd never wear. If I'm gonna make a shirt, it's gonna be friggin' probably some kind of Hawaiian shirt because I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna have trouble making a shirt. So, so ask yourself what you listen to. What moves you? What music moves you? Ten to one. And, and, and don't get me wrong, dude. This is all once again. I mean, that's why I did. That's why I did a pop rock standard back then. Dude, shall I play some Bieber or something? It, that only does two chords. It only uses one of them. I mean, all this, I mean, it doesn't matter. Beethoven's fifth is just one five, one five, one five, one five. I, I'm just, you know, once again, it's just the cordon bleu. I want to learn, I want to learn how to make an omelet. Oh my God, look at this guy making this bechamel sauces and, and, and duck bone marrow things. Well, that's great, but do you, when's the last time you had duck bone marrow? <laughs> Why are you letting that freak you out? from making a damn good cheeseburger so you can have sex, which is the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, so that's, that's what I want to, I want to, look, I'm sitting here, I just never, you know, I just did whatever, I just did what needed doing. And I didn't really care how good I was at it. It frustrated me that I wasn't better at it. Don't get me wrong. But, all of a sudden, once again, at some point, the way that I did it so ignorantly it kind of became brilliant, so all that shit will change on you, too. So, you know, I like it because it's just like, it is, it's just like dating. Like, that one girl looks at all the things you do and calls you a weirdo. The next girl looks at all the things you do and thinks she's the most charming little, esoteric, eccentric little thing ever, you know. Okay, is, is this any? Is this helped at all? Yes. yes. <laughs> Do you want to tell the Ellen story really quick, just for a minute? Just, huh? 
just about what it meant to sort of find what it was that you wanted to say and how that worked out. But Ellen? Yeah. But, okay, so my, my and, this, and this just happened to me again recently because I'm surrounded by friggin' my songwriters are friggin' nuts. I mean, I'm, I'm going to the number one party I'm up right now. And it pulls you off and you end up writing other people's shit and you forget to write your shit. And it's happened to me so many times that you'd think at this point, I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to, nope. And all of a sudden you look back and realize, like, oh, my God. And then I go off and write something. <coughs> so so I was, this is when I was in the bars, and I, and I kind of had the post deal. You know, I kind of had that. And I'm trying to write all these songs, I'm in the body count. Look, this is back in country music where if you don't kill, if you weren't killing somebody off at least once a week, I mean, you were like, what the hell is wrong with you? There needs to be some people dead, crying in the grave. You know, it was kind of country music, bad guy. And um, I, didn't really, I didn't really want to do, you know, I didn't, I didn't really ever feel consider myself that country, but, you know, it was the only game in town, so sure. Um, but I was dating this girl, and um, and she left her wallet on the table one day. You know, and had that little window with her driver's license, you know, on it. And I looked down. I've been dating. We've been dating for a while. And I looked down and realized that she had a first name, that she had been going by her middle name, and she had never even mentioned it. So like, she's in the back of the house. And I looked down. I'm like. Oh my God, is your first name Ellen? And all I heard was running footsteps. No, I don't tell you, I hate it. Don't get it, do it. No, 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 I can't. Don't, no, don't tell me Ellen. I hate Ellen. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't even tell me. Tell me not to do it. To tell you. I know if I told you, you'd say that. I'm like, well, Ellen, why are you getting so mad? Like, oh. <laughs> so in the middle of me writing all these friggin', in fact, this is one of the reasons why I got my publishing deal. I mean, in the middle of me writing all these friggin' deep ass songs, I was like, I'm gonna write a song called Ellen, and I'm gonna say the word Ellen as many possible friggin' times as you can say it in a song without just being stupid. <laughs> so I just, I never did. I just wrote it. Ellen, just it was just this little stupid kind of Georgia satellite, just a little stupid three chord rocker thing, just to piss her off. I was thoroughly entertained doing it. <laughs> um, my little eight track, I did this little stupid thing of it, but not. And of course, so I turned in some songs, and I just that was back when you had all these ones on this tape. Literally, you just run, you just run through these tapes, and you just run these things off. You couldn't really just scan around like you could nowadays so so easily. I didn't have markers and all that stuff. So I just run everything down my cassettes. And there was like the song before and the song actually one of my real songs where grandma got killed again or whatever. And and <laughs> and, uh, and that song was in there and these and everybody was jumping up and down. And this and a guy from another publishing company called me, like going, Mess, are you gonna do anything you got? And so I was like, all of a sudden this but it was that constantly being re reintroduced to that thing of, man, whenever you, well, we're, we're heading toward naked and we're heading toward I know, naked. I know, I'm excited. Toward, I'm so excited. God, you always say, you aren't going to ask me, you're just going to. When, when, you, when you forget all that, when I forget, every time I forget all that shit, and I forget I can't play guitar, and I forget that this is a song title that nobody's going to understand, and I forget that... I don't give a shit if somebody cuts this thing or not. And I'm just going to write this friggin' song because I'm just lost in it and it makes me laugh. Those songs always just do something amazing. They're, they're, it's when you, it's when you just, it is. It's that thing of you get home and I don't know how to cook now and oh my God, I'm about half stoned, about half drunk. And, there's a little hamburger, and there's olives, and there's some, yeah, I got this shit. And you just start putting it in and you're just like, and you're not worried about, I'm not trying to sell it, I'm not trying to package it, I'm not trying to get a deal where I can sell it at Kroger in the frozen food section to make a billion dollars. I'm just trying to make some serious ass drunk food, man. Oh my God. Yes. Perfect. And 
turns out that your friends come over like, dude, you should package this shit up and sell it at Kroger and throw your food station, man. I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, man. It's that. It's, um, it's, okay. I'm, I'm somewhat of a Christian. The first story in the Bible that involves humans is, of course, Adam and Eve. And there, you know, there's the big, there's, there's quite the fundamentalist take on this, and they were cast out in original sin and all that. <laughs> if, you, if you read it, so what happened? What happened? They're there, and there's tea trees, there's a tree of wisdom, tree of life, and they're like, okay, don't, don't miss that. They are there are tea trees, they're not just one. Tree of wisdom, tree of life. Tree of life will give you immortality. Mm -hmm. but, uh, tree of wisdom. Don't mess the tree. And everybody gets in that, and Eve did it. She was like, it's best bullshit. It's like, it, 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 human nature ate the apple. Not a woman or a man. Human friggin' nature ate the apple. And we all know. So, we're not going to get into there. But what happened? So they ate the apple. And they were given, and God saw it and got pissed. But did he say, he didn't say it was a sin. He told them not to do it. He didn't say it was a sin. So what did he do? He gave them self-awareness. Think of the context of that. You know the one thing I asked you not to do. So here, fine. Boom, there you go. So when you think about self-awareness in that respect, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. It's a, it's a super bad thing. It's like, God. I mean, it's like God going, fine, there you go. Have you some of that? <laughs> Self-awareness. What's the, what's the, probably the, you kids are, some of you kids are young, so you won't agree with this, but in, in your estimation right now, where are some of the goofiest people and things? What part of the country do those generally come from? The goofiest, craziest, whacked out, California, uh, Los Angeles, Austin, <laughs> where, where self-awareness could not be higher. I was riding on a plane with a guy the other day. I uh, live in Orange County, and he said, okay, the latest thing, because I'm going to L.A. for a meeting, he goes, okay, the latest thing, he goes, if you see, he said, here's what you can't do. In California now, you see a couple pushing a child, you know, like a toddler in a, in, a, in a carriage or whatever, under no circumstance, doesn't matter if, if, it's, if it's two just, just ebony, white, Viking-looking people and they have a Chinese baby in there, you, under no circumstances do you go, oh, did you adopt? Because the parents have likely had so much plastic surgery that their child will look so different from them that if you ask if they adopted, you will highly insult them. Which means we're only months away from, well, go ahead and touch up the three-year-old so it looks more like perfect mom and dad. But nonetheless, so right now, how's that for self-awareness? That is self-awareness unchecked. Where, how am I coming off? What's going on? What are other people going to think of me? And once again, I'm not saying that that happened in California. This is human nature, y'all, and we all do it. But where does it get us? What does it do? And as a writer... I write down, I wrote, I wrote a song in the sky one time. First line has to be amazing. Okay? I do. I wrote, I wrote a Lawrence from Arabia the other night. It started with, the last camel died at noon. We need <laughs> a line like that in our song. Right? Okay? I'm all about that. We sat there for seven hours. Right? Nope, not good enough. Nope, not good enough. Nope, not good enough. Nope, not good Five, four, five, I'm like, out of my house. Out of my house. Ever come back. And within two or three years, he had a couple of cuts within two or three years. He's out of the last I heard he was selling pickup trucks. He probably lost that job because he was trying to own himself a perfect pickup truck, man. You're not, you're not the guy. You're not the guy. So, self awareness. 
You write something, you think something, oh, that's stupid, that's not cool enough, somebody's already written that song, nobody wants to hear this. Well, yeah, whatever, dude. It's endless. It's friggin' endless. It's endless. You want to get back in God's graces? You want to get closer <coughs> to God? You want to get back to Eden? You want to run naked through Eden? We all do. Turn it off. As best you can. Don't ask why. Don't ask what. Your, your, your talent as a critic will grow astronomically faster than your talent as a writer. Turn that shit off. Are you running naked through Eden? Are you closer to God? Are you a little bit more as God would have had you been? Think about the Bible. All these faith, 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 faith. God is saying, trying to get you to step outside of you, figure it all out. It makes sense to you at all times. And just go with it sometimes. Just friggin' go with it. You don't have to be a Christian to understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying this as a Christian. It just happens to, you know, it's a, it's some Christian talk that lines up in that way. But you don't have to be a Christian at all to get what I'm saying. I really do think that. I think I think people that didn't raise their hands when I asked you to the song yesterday or last week or last month. But there's a lot of self-awareness that went into that. I'm going to go ahead and guess that. There's a lot of self-awareness. There's a self-awareness that, oh, I can't play guitar good enough. I can't play an instrument good enough. Two notes on that piano. That song won a friggin' Grammy and sold about 30 million records. Two notes. Two! <laughs> <laughs> Had she... What would have happened if she had gone, I can't play piano? These are just two stupid chords right next to each other. What would have happened if I would have not been playing my rig and come up with red, 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 and just went, oh my God, we got to use that shit. That's stupid. And I was like, red, red, and I was like, oh, red, 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 neck. No, red, 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 no, red, 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 red. We were going to put it on the outro, and it ended up counting off the song. And And when you hear on the record, that red, 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 that was actually recorded in my, I was Dallas Davidson, in my office. That guitar is actually me, that's my old red guitar, that old. I can't play. And I'm playing guitar. I'm, I'm getting an NSI award, ten, ten, 10 songs of the year. Next, this Sunday. For that song. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> The self-awareness and all that stuff. It's, a, it's the death of any writer. Mm -hmm. It's death. Period. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever go up? Would you ever go up to somebody you like and say hi? If you couldn't just at least beat back your self-awareness just for a few seconds. If just your desire to see this person was stronger than that. So look what happened. You curbed it just for an instant. What happened? I hope something amazing. I hope a big hickey to the big, just a big. <laughs> <laughs> you put it away for ten seconds. And look what happened. Ten seconds. Look what happened. You went and talked to this girl. She talked back. Next thing you know, you're going on a date. You're kissing on the car and the winds are steaming up. Ten fucking seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. You turned it off. Or really explore where that switch is. And work it a little bit. Writing's a great place to start because you can just do it in your room. You just don't worry about it. You just, you just don't worry about it. You don't worry about it. It is what it is. It is what it is. 
and shit's just going to come out. When you come back later, you can clean it up. You can. You know, that's what I try to do in the morning. Though. When I walk in my office, everything's a wrap. My laptop's on. My phone's on. I, I've just got. A, I've got a track running. So somehow I'll just go. Man, I was thinking about you. Know, I was thinking. I was thinking. Dallas Davidson walks in, and I got this clock I was throwing out, and it was a Beatles clock. And he goes, "Man, I was just down in Georgia. Man, those rednecks. They don't listen to the Beatles. They." And while he was coming out with. Boys, when I heard all the video, he had said rednecks into my microphone, and I saw the rednecks on my screen. I was like, <laughs> red, 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 red. So I'm over there just, I went to Dallas Davis, I'm, and Red and Red is two world famous songwriters. I'm over there, red, 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 red. While they're putting out the first line of the song, I'm got this thing going, and then we're all like, Thirty seconds later, they got the first line of the song. I've got this red, red, red thing that makes somebody laugh. You know, we're supposed to be these brilliant millionaire songwriters, and we were all just scattering, just trying to entertain ourselves and each other. <laughs> we were as butt naked as you can get running through Eden. That's probably the thing about co-writing is to get to that point with somebody where you'll just, I mean, you always are like, look, this is going to sound stupid. I always tell my song, my car like, man, it just sounds stupid, like. Please. I was like, come on, dude. You know, yeah. You know, we we got to say a thousand stupid things to, to find the 15 good things that are going on the song. Just in general, this whole self awareness thing. And the problem is, I mean, we live in a world where it's just ratcheted up more and more. Everybody's on friggin' YouTube. <laughs> and all that shit. And be the most interesting people you know. Be the most interesting people you know. <clears throat> guarantee you, guarantee you, they're the people that are the least worried about how they come off. Mm -hmm. Damn right. Oh my God. So my, the dudes, I, the guys that I just love, Tony Mullins. Hey, man. <laughs> I mean, people that don't have the faintest idea nor care to know how in the hell they're coming off. Those are the people that, oh my God, oh my God I want to do a TV show with that guy. <laughs> Is it not? Aren't those the people you dig? That's what all these, all these reality TV shows, that's all they're desperately trying to do, all these real housewives. Are. They're trying to find those few nuggets of girls that will forget a camera's there and want to act like themselves in some horrible fashion. That's the problem. They want some, they want some horrible person. But we all know, I mean, the people that are most interesting to us, the people that we are fascinated with, are the people that they aren't aware that they're doing those things that make them fascinating, are they? And if you were to tell them, it might ruin it. Put it Yeah. You just hope they do it. You take your buddies. Oh my God, he said it again. You can't believe it. The evidence of it is everywhere. People that it's everywhere, man. Once again, you table up for ten seconds, and you can meet the person that you'll love the rest of your life. The people that are most fascinating. The people that don't give a shit how they come off. They're just being. That's dangerous out there in society. You don't need to just go up to every pretty girl and just like unfiltered, like, what is going on? Jew, baby! I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Out there in the world, it could probably be like, but man, here, here, now, with this? Come on, man. Dude, this is some butt-naked eating waiting to happen. You ain't gonna hurt nobody. You ain't gonna do nothing. And you're probably not gonna make any money writing songs. Most people don't. <coughs> you know, you have a great friggin' time writing songs. You're going to have a great time writing songs. You're going to do what songwriting is supposed to do. It's just going to open something up in you. And you're going to be in this place where you're a little closer to God. You're a little closer to how God would have you be. You're in that place for a good time where you reach out for your cup of coffee that you came <coughs> ten minutes ago, and it's ice cold. It was four and a half hours ago, five minutes ago. There's no time. Because God lives in an absolute world where there is no time. 
and you just brushed a little closer, and all of a sudden your coffee from five minutes ago is cold, and the sun's going down. What the hell? I haven't eaten lunch. And then I said, good day, ma'am. Just like that night, you're sitting across from her, and all of a sudden the restaurant's closed, and they're stacking chairs, and you just got here, and you forgot to order food. And those are good nights, man. That's the shit. <laughs> Okay, so songwriting. Um. <laughs> <laughs>